Open my lips that my mouth may proclaim your praise. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we get alive. Blessed be His Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving 
Come into his courts with praise. Give thanks unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Bringing our trespasses and sins, we humbly approach your throne, O God, seeking your forgiveness. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so, uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Psalms 41 and 52 Psalm 41 Happy are they who consider the poor and needy, the Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and he will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Psalm 52 You tyrant! Why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O oh, worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, 
This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. But the Israelites broke faith in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things and the anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Haven, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said to him, Not all the people need go up, about two or three thousand men should go up and attack Ai, since they are so few. Do not make the whole people toil up there. So about 3,000 of the people went up there, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about 36 of them, chasing them from outside the gate as far as Shibarim, and killing them on the slope. The hearts of the people melted and turned to water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the ground on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel. And they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Ah, Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all to hand us over to the Amorites so as to destroy us? Would that we had been content to settle beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has turned their backs to their enemies? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up. Why have you fallen upon your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I imposed on them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have acted deceitfully. And they have put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the Israelites are unable to stand before their enemies. They turn their backs to their enemies because they have become a thing devoted for destruction themselves. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Proceed to sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, There are devoted things among you, O Israel. You will be unable to stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted things from among you. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A Song to the Lamb Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
touch my hands, my mouth and my heart. Fill my life, Lord, every part, and let the power of your Holy Ghost let it fall on me. Anointing. Green Olive Tree. Psalm 52 verse 8 reads, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless it unto our hearts and glorify your name. For the entrance of your word giveth light. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do you believe as God's people, people who live righteously, that you are anointed of God? Well, you are. That's the good news. The bad news is that people will hate you for it. It might seem that they hate you for no reason, but they have a reason. It is your anointing that bothers them. They can't stand to share the same space with you because your very presence cast a shadow on their spotlight, crimps their dark deeds. They envy the anointing that's upon you and would do all in their power to dominate, frustrate, and humiliate you because that is the desire of their master, the devil. They wish to crimp and crush your divine destiny and dissipate your hope. This kind of hate can even come in the form of betrayal. Don't be surprised when this kind of behavior comes from your very own church people. Jesus said that we should not think it's strange when this happens. This happened to him. So we should not think it's strange that the world hate, hates us. David, anointed by God to be king, faced this very thing. Before he became king, he was anointed king. But he found himself fleeing during this period, before his ascension, fleeing for his life in the wilderness from his very own king, King Saul, the leader of God's people. However, it was under such this dire pressure that David discovered his true identity and purpose. Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life are the day that you are born and the day you find out why. An incident occurred that helped David to discover just why he was anointed king and who that anointed king, the leader of Israel, the leader of God's people, was supposed to be. David discovered in his own words that he was like a green olive tree in the house of God. Now, what did he mean? Well, let's examine David's self-discovery and see just how it may reflect upon our own uh, destinies and our own self-discoveries. First of all, just as a green olive tree in the house of God supplies oil to the lamps of God, 
So David saw himself as fuel to the witness of God's presence. The tabernacle had a lampstand carrying seven lamps. These lamps were fueled by olive oil. The lampstand was the only light in the tabernacle. The priests were to never allow the lamps to go out. They were to daily trim the wicks and replenish the oil. So the oil, the seven lamps on the, on the lampstand, and the light that emanated from it all came together to represent the Holy Spirit and the witness of God's presence. The olive tree, therefore, represents the source of oil supply. The fact that the olive tree was green also meant that it was flourishing and healthy. So it was a capable source of an abundant supply of oil. David was really saying that his anointing, his anointing as king, he, with this anointing, he will be an abundant supply of Holy Ghost energy and power to keep the name of God alive. The, the name of Yahweh will be known because of the anointing that's upon his life. That's the king's duty. His anointing was not just something that, you know, the oil that was poured upon him, it was something flowing out of him. This was also a prophetic statement, my friends. It was a prophetic statement that looked forward to Jesus Christ, the son of David, the head of the church, who would be the one who would release the Holy Ghost upon us, upon the church, like it did on the day of Pentecost. So now David, having made such a statement, would have sounded bigoted had it not been a divine self-revelation. Self so exactly how did David come upon this self-revelation? Well, it happened like this. King Saul had slaughtered all the priests in the house of God. And he did that because they supplied David and his men with food. Ahimelech the priest gave David and his hungry men the showbread of the tabernacle. This bread was only for the priest, but Ahimelech had no other food to give. Present to witness this was Dueg the Edomite, and Edomites are really uh, the children of Esau, who never really cared about God's witness and God's birthright. So Dueg the Edomite had witnessed this occasion and in envy and with malicious intent, he stoked King Saul's anger with his bad report. So the king killed all the priests. Ahimelech and his sons killed. With the killing of the priests, there was no one there to trim the lamps and to keep the light burning. Darkness had descended upon God's house. Now, this had never happened before, even since the time of Moses. King Saul had extinguished the light of God's house, shunned the presence of God, silenced the witness of God's Holy Spirit, and darkened both his conscience and the conscience of the nation. Now, who would remain a witness for God? Who would speak for God in the land? Who would be a light? It was in that moment that David saw his purpose. He would be the source of that light. He, as king, would ensure that there would always be a witness for God in the land. David trusted in his anointing. He trusted that no matter how dark it got, God will see to it that he become king. And when he does, he will reestablish worship in God's house. By his anointing, he would relight the lamp in the, of the presence of God, and he would never let it go out. By his anointing, the conscience of the nation will be revived. By his anointing, the world will know that there is a God in Israel. That was David's fresh understanding of his purpose as the anointed king of God. 
although he was not able to immediately accomplish it because he had not yet ascended. In fact, he was right now scrambling for his life throughout the desert. Although it was not yet in sight and he didn't know how and when it could happen, it became a resolution in his heart. It was this resolution that helped fit him to become God's witness as king. It was that resolution that kept him going. Now he understand and he understood why he was anointed. Similarly, we too should have a self-revelation, a self-understanding of our purpose and our work and our mission. Jesus said that through him, we are the light of the world. He has given us the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As members of the church, we are the ministers of the church. For so says our catechism. We as the church are witnesses of the resurrection. In a dark nation, we must never let the light of God's presence go out. We must hold forth the light as best we can. Let this be our self-understanding. Like King Saul, some of our leaders and aspiring leaders may have thought only about their ambition, about protecting their positions. But let this not be true of the rest of us. Our only mission and purpose must be to keep the light of God ablaze as a witness to his presence in a dark world. It was a dark day when the very leader of God's people, King Saul, had lost sight of this. Thank God for King David and for his self-revelation. Not only did David see himself as a source of oil for the witness of God's uh, light in the nation, David saw himself as an abundant supply. So just as a green olive tree in the house of God is an abundant supply of oil to the lamps of God's house, so David saw himself as an abundant supply of God's witness. Even as it still does today, oil symbolized wealth. Oil rich countries, yeah. The Hebrew word literally means to be fat, therefore strength. David saw himself as the green olive tree. The reference to the greenness of the olive tree suggests that the tree is flourishing. It's strong. It's capable. It has a wealthy, abundant, strong source of oil. The Hebrew word for oil, its root, comes, uh, means name or character. So it comes from the root name or character. Yahweh name, Yahweh's name is his power. That's why the scripture says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. That's why we say there's power in the name of Jesus. That's why we conquer in his name, according to Revelation. There are certain names, even in our society, that can open doors. So, your name is your wealth. William Shakespeare, using a character in Othello, said, I think the character Lago said, Good name in man and woman, dear Lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse? Steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. Shakespeare was telling us that stealing one's honor a good person's reputation is a worse crime than stealing their money. While money has constantly changed possessors, a person's honor belongs only to the owner. 
compared to their good name, their money is mere trash. Now, since oil represents the strength of wealth that comes from a good reputation, David was saying that he carried the name of God in his anointing. His anointing has made him strong. His anointing has given him a yet unseen abundant wealth. He lives and moves and does God's work under the anointed unstoppable power of the Almighty. You see, King Saul and Dueg the Edomite had tried to keep him from his God-given destiny. They had tried to weaken him and to weaken his faith and to weaken his resolve and to, to kill him. King Saul chased him throughout the country. But David's strength of character made it so that he would never touch King Saul. Because King Saul was the Lord's anointed king. He would never fight back, even when the opportunity presented himself. While Doeg the Edomite skillfully used words to incite others against him, David skillfully used his anointed words to write songs of worship that exposed evil, particularly Doeg's evil, and revealed God's power over evil. This very song, this very Psalm 52, was a song written for the uh, Levites, the musicians, in the house of God to sing in memory and as a reminder that God raises up the holy and righteous and destroys such people, such evil as do it. So when are we like David, green olive trees? We are like David when we come to an understanding of our anointing. The oil of the Holy Ghost is an anointing that is not just poured on, on us, but it's something that should be flowing out of us, expressed in the gifts of the Spirit, flowing out of us, abundantly bubbling up to meet the needs of God's people and to witness to God's glory. Jesus said, he who believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he meant the Holy Ghost anointing. We are like David when we remember that we are anointed by God. And despite what anyone may do to make us forget, we must cling to that fact that God had his hand on us. And God is keeping his hand on us. The devil does not like it when God moves. So he sends people and circumstances to block and to frustrate the work of God in you and to keep you from your divine destiny. But we must remember our anointing. We must cling to the fact that we are anointed and that God's will may be done, will be done, no matter what. People may act against us, creating doubt about our character. But we need to hold on to our identity and we need to hold on to our call and we need to hold on to our anointing. People may conspire to keep us out of fulfilling our calling, but our anointing must give us hope and we must keep ministering anyway. People may act against us and against those who try to support us. And at times there may be nobody to even speak for us because they've been silenced. But we must keep a hold of our anointing anyway. People may try to destroy the witness of the church. But we must hold on to our anointed witness even if we are the last ones left. So, are you a green tree? Are you a green olive tree in the house of God? Am I a green olive tree in the house of God? May God bless us. 
Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have spoken. We pray that your anointed Holy Spirit, your, your anointing of the Holy Spirit will stir up within us and stir us into action and stir us into faith. We thank you for speaking. And we ask that you go before us and expose evil for what it is and lift up righteousness for your glory and for the glory of your son jesus christ our lord amen the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Suffrages Suffrage B Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, from your throne of grace, you beckon us come. And so with hearts of gratitude, we humbly approach you. We pray for the church in the world. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the most reverend Justin Welby. Please sustain his world vision. In the church in the province of the West Indies, we pray for our Archbishop, the most reverend Howard Gregory. May his ministry continue with your guidance. 
in our Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, we pray for our own beloved Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley. Guide his decisions, Lord. Empower his ministry and protect him and his family. May your grace also extend to our retired bishops, Clive, Rawl, and Calvin, and also to their families. In our Northeast region, we bring before you our Archdeacon, the Venerable Kenley Baldio. May you in this season strengthen him to continue in your calling. Fill him with your wisdom and give, make him fit and keep him fit for the challenges of ministry in times like these. In our parish, the parish of St. Mary, Tacarigo, we pray for our beloved rector, the Reverend Father Dr. Anderson Maxwell, and for his assistant priests, the Reverend Father Titus Akberali, and the Reverend Daniel Andre. Strengthen the work of their hands as they serve you. We lift up to you also the deacons of our parish, the Reverends Theodore Finley, Carl Scipio, Mark Haynes, and yours truly, the Reverend Rodden Fanfare. Support us even as you have sent us. Keep our families enfolded in you. We pray for the triumph of the gospel message over darkness and for its triumph over deception and lies. We pray at this time for those traveling, especially for Sister Nelsia Edwards. May you grant her traveling mercies. Prayers extend for all those going on vacation. We pray for those using the nation's roads. Keep us all safe for those owning new vehicles, especially for Sister Umilta Bernard Pierre. We give you thanks for your supply of good things and may we use them in safety and to your glory. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, who has bidden light to shine out of darkness and has awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace, make us children of the light and of the day that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.